emissary of Chicago, worked for Sam Gentana, reported to Sam Gentana's lieutenant, Dave Yaris, Lenny Patrick. He went down to um, uh, Dallas in the late 40s and began um, with uh, strip clubs and nightclubs and so forth and was uh, starting to get to know the police and just conducting operations. As time went on, Jack Ruby helped smuggle guns uh, uh, to the rebels in, in Cuba as well as through Central America to Guatemala and so forth in collaboration with the CIA, in collaboration with um, Guy Bannister, in collaboration with other individuals who have all been some form implicated in uh, the goings on with the assassination. The only way that Ruby could have shot Oswald in front of 77 armed policemen in a basement, 77 armed policemen, the only way he could have done it was to have had help from the police. And uh, we discovered, of course, that Ruby was very close to the Dallas police force. He knew maybe 60 or 70 cops by, by their first name. He used to bring them sandwiches at night. He used to uh, arrange dates between them and his striptease girls. I mean, he acted like a pimp between those girls and, and the police. He arranged loans for police officers. So uh, he was someone that the police would, would recognize right away and would, they would allow him in even under such extraordinary circumstances as moving Oswald to a different place. A, a lot of the uh, uh, media attention regarding events that take place, such as the one you just mentioned, I think concerns solely the fact that people want to blow things out of proportion and create a uh, aura for them to sell more newspapers or magazines. At one time, Life Magazine did a whole spread on Carlos Marcello, as well as Reader's Digest. It makes interesting reading, because if you would meet the gentleman uh, and have time to spend with him, you understand that he, he couldn't be what he has claimed to be by all these different people. But I think, to a certain extent, um, some people derive pleasure out of creating something that, that is fictitious or really not there. Uh, they want to believe it, but it's just something that's that's not true. The classic procedure is the shooter shoots the target, and somebody else shoots the shooter. So Oswald shoots him, and Ruby shoots him, and you never know why the shooter did this. You know, it's it's like standard procedure. But even if they did, uh, let's say the mafia did do it, aside from the from from trying to sort out history, I'm not sure what we would gain by knowing, yeah. except for the, the answering the questions of, of of history, you know, to want to know what really happened. But I, it, it certainly didn't improve the standing of the mafia. No. The mafia basically continued its long, slow decline after the assassination in 63. So I don't think it... it, it if it were, if Marcello and, and his people, or some, one of his people did it, helped set up Oswald and all that, it didn't gain them anything. Free 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 the vote here in the state of California, the vote in the state of South Dakota, here is the most urban state of any of the states of our union, South Dakota, the most rural state of any of the states of our union, we're able to win them both. I think that we can end the divisions within the United States. My thanks to all of you, and now it's on to Chicago, and let's win there. Just please stay back. Just a doctor, come right here. Is there a doctor in the house? It was one of those that actually had someone in my arms for a minute or two that night when he still had the little tiny gun. God, it was so tiny. I'll never forget how little it was and how much damage a little tiny. It looked like a little water pistol. It was like a child's thing. It was so small. But 
I felt that um, he had killed Barbie, but there are there are other people who I respect who who think otherwise. That's all I can say. Some investigators found out after the uh, Robert Kennedy assassination that Sirhan Sirhan had low-level contacts with the mafia in Los Angeles. First of all, he was a horseman. He, 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 he trained horses, and he um, bet on horses at the horse races. The, the racing tracks in um, Southern California were all under the control of mafia guys like um, Mickey Cohen. And um, Mickey Cohen happened to be a friend of Carlos Marcello. And as a matter of fact, I have a picture in my book of Marcello and Cohen together testifying, uh, sitting at the same table uh, and testifying together. They knew each other. Mr. Uh, Cohen, would you uh, tell the committee about the dispute and your participation in it, the dispute between the coach company and the road company, cigarette company in Los Angeles? I respectfully decline to answer. For what reason? I respectfully decline to answer on the grounds that I may tend to incriminate uh, Would you relate to the committee why you received the $11,000? I respectfully decline to answer on the same ground. Uh, could you tell the committee any other instances where you received money for remaining out of a fight of this kind? I respectfully decline to answer. Sirhan Sirhan worked on a ranch at, called, at Corona outside of Los Angeles, and the foreman there, his boss, was a man with the name of um, Donna Rumas. And no one was particularly suspicious of Donna Rumas, but 10 months after the murder, uh, FBI investigators found out that D Donna Rumas was somebody else, um, uh, a completely different person who was a member of the, of the mafia on the East Coast. Bobby Kennedy was one of the most hated men in America, uh, it, it takes some special doing to be hated on one side by Jimmy Hoffa and on the other side hated almost with as much vehemence by the head of the FBI because Hoover hated Bobby equally with uh, Jimmy. He had a host, a host of enemies on all sides. Hoover learned of a plot against Kennedy, John Kennedy and didn't notify the Secret Service about it, did not notify the Kennedy family about it. He just let it happen. And he was the happiest man in the world because the Kennedys were going to fire him from his position as director. Every president from Roosevelt wanted to get rid of Hoover, but didn't think the cost would be worth it. But Kennedy once said something I think was, was beautiful. He said, um, uh, let's see if that was the occasion. Now, he, he said, what, uh, what would he do about J. Edgar Hoover? He said, he said well, after I'm reelected, he said, what we'll do is we'll have the Army Band march down one side of, uh, of, the, of the plaza between the Capitol and the Lincoln Memorial. We'll have the Navy Band march down the other. We'll have the Air Force Band parachute down the middle. And I will present J. Edgar Hoover with a Medal of Freedom, and then I'll whisper in his ear, you are retired. The fact is that that was a very different time in American history. And I think that if, I, if all I do is compare myself to the work of my father, then obviously I feel like I'm a fairly major failure in life. You know? <laughs> so so it's, a, it's, a, it's a high standard to, uh, to, to try to set for yourself. I think that, uh, you know, you, you try to do the best you can. They, uh, there was this, that was a different time in American history, a different time for an Irish Catholic family from uh, Boston and, and all the, the spirit with which they uh, were able to capture and, and uh, the tremendous uh, difference that I think they did make in the lives of so many people. Uh, and uh, so I think you just, you know, you try to do the best you can and you, you try to talk about the issues uh, and you try to, uh, uh, you know, you try to, to, to uh, uh, bring these issues up in a way that uh, uh, you feel that is, is uh, appropriate uh, for, the, for the kinds of goals and aspirations that I think they would have had and that I have. But, I, you know, in terms of being able to make the same impact as they did, just do the best you can.